Hi guys, my name is Prakpal and welcome back in my new video. In this video, we are going to solve the critical path method numerical in easy steps. So to get into this, we have some available data such as we have activity, okay, immediate predecessors and the completion time. So with the help of this table, we are going to draw a network diagram and also we are going to do the calculations of the float. So with the help of that float, we can able to identify the critical path. Okay. So let's get into this. So first of all, let's understand the activity. Now you can see we have activity over here. Okay. These all are our activities. These all are our their predecessor and the completion time. So when we do the uh, like diagrammatic representation of the network diagram, we need to first look at the activity. So activity A, B and C don't have any predecessor. It means they are the unique act activities. So let's draw that one. So first of all, just draw a circle which can represent the earliest start, latest finish, okay, or earliest finish and the float, right? So I'm just drawing this diagram over here to get the calculations done at the same place itself, right? So now you can see A, B, C are the three tasks don't have any predecessor but they have a completion time okay so first draw the a activity b activity and the c activity okay so these are the activities i have drawn and i'm also going to draw a circle over here which is going to represent their time okay so so this is a a activity this is a b activity and this is a c activity Okay, so all three activity don't have any start time. So it is a zero and A activity is having a completion time of two. Okay, B activity having a completion time of nine, right? And C activity is having completion time of four. So I have written this completion time over here. Is this okay with you? Right now, moving further, we are understanding the rest of the task such as the A activity complete D activity will start. It means we need to draw one connection between A activity to the D activity, right? So once A activity complete, D activity will start. This is a D activity, right? Now, what is the duration of D activity is 5. Now here is a catch, okay? 5 is a duration of the A activity. So we are writing 5 over here, okay? Understand? You can also write the completion time over here. You can just write a completion time after the task. No worries. So to get the better understanding. Now guys see. D activity starts one A activity complete and it is having a completion time of 5. So what would be the finish time would be for the D activity will be 5 plus 2. So it will be 7 over here. I hope this is understood. Okay, now once D activity complete, okay, once D activity complete, E activity will start. Okay, let's go. So once E active, once D activity complete, E active activity, okay, will start, which is having a duration of eight, right? So seven plus eight become fifteen. Okay, oh, it's my bad. Right, become fifteen. Okay. Now, once E activity complete, okay, F activity will start, okay. Now, just take this activity over here, right, which is the F activity and having the duration of how much? 3. So, 15 plus 3 is, we need to draw here, okay. But now, let's wait, okay. We need to wait and we need to look at the maximum value will be coming at this point right so wait over there now let's again back to our table right now we have a b activity okay which is heavy which is starting which is uh, finishing okay and after that g activity is going to start so we have some relations which i have seen in the table and with respect to that i'm drawing my table right so once the b activity complete g activity is going to start right so i'm going to draw one activity over here okay which is a G activity and having a time of 4. So 9 plus 4 is 
13 okay so i am writing 13 over here right okay now once g and i activity complete but wait 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 we don't have any i activity as of now so where is an i activity here it is okay and what is a predecessor for the I activity is a c activity so once c activity complete i activity will start so okay draw the i activity now okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna draw the i activity but i have activity but let's understand that g and i once the g and i activity will complete only after that h activity will start so it means there is a interrelations between the g activity i activity and h activity so how it will start we just need to give the relations from the c activity to direct g activity it means this is an i activity which is having okay which is having the relation of duration of 5 meter and see once the activity complete okay the i activity will start and having the 5 value so 4 plus 5 is 9 9 plus 4 become 13 so what is the maximum thing over here 13 so we are writing 13 over here okay now now we have once a g and i activity complete h activity is going to start right so i am directly connecting this activity to the last activity okay which is a h activity and having a duration of 11 so now we have some significance that 13 plus 11 become 24 so i am writing 24 over here now you can see i have some bigger value rather than the top this this network which is supposed to provide me that's the reason i have not added the value over there right now moving further <clears throat> once c activity complete j activity will start oh there is a one relation right so now draw again one line which is providing the j activity of the duration with 7 so there is one table also will generate which gives you 4 plus 7 which is 11 right so that's an activity and once j activity finish k activity will start so here we go so this is a k activity with a duration of 5 so 11 plus 5 also is a not more than 24 so this is a relation guys this is a network diagram we have drawn now this is a forward pass calculation we can say right so from this direction to this directions we did the calculations to get the earlier start earlier start and earlier finish now we are going to do the step calculations from this side to this side to get the latest start and latest finish so with the help of these two functions we can able to identify the float and the float of the activity will be zero so that activity consider as a critical activity that's what our calculations right that is our output my bad right so let's get into this now we have a one flow diagram from this side to this side to get the earlier start now just do the back end side calculations to do the back side calculation guys is really that much easy you don't no need to worry about this now see we have the maximum value of the 24 among all the networks so i am drawing i am just writing the 24 over here give me a moment yeah i am writing 24 over here right so 24 minus 24 is a zero why 24 because 15 plus 3 also not become 24 11 plus 5 also not becoming the 24 it means that the highest value is 13 plus 11 which is a 24 okay now just do the back end calculations with each and every terms right so once i am minusing 24 minus 11 if i just doing 24 minus of 11 it gives me 13 so i am writing 13 over here now 13 minus 4 i am getting 9 i have write 9 over here and 9 minus 9 is become 0 oh my god so this is one quick calculation we did now just do the rest calculation right 24 minus 5 it's become 9 19 sorry 19 minus 7 okay 19 minus 7 if you just do that one so we also get okay now here we have a catch right so which is the lowest one we need to take that one okay 
the 19 minus 7 is something more which with uh, which is 13 minus 5 so 13 minus 5 value is 8 okay and the 19 minus 7 which is 12 so this is not higher this is the highest one so we are taking the lowest value over here right now 8 minus 4 become 4 so we can't write 4 over here because it's a 0 okay now we want 0 at the start and at the finish right oh my bad okay now again let's do one thing 24 minus 3 it is 21 right 21 minus 8 become 13 and 13 minus 5 is 8 so now see what I did guys from this side I just added all the time and when I'm doing the backward calculation I have minus the time and I have taken the that time which is the lowest and from while going from positive direction I have taken the value which is the highest okay you got this point it's very easy okay so doing this calculations doing this calculations now we calculate all the uh, earlier start earlier finish later start latest finish I'm gonna give a quick example in my upcoming videos for all these four constraint and which is really very easy for all of you okay so this is a quick example I have brought for you now let's see where is we have the zero so both the term okay the earliest finish and latest finish would be zero so 13 minus 13 is zero okay let me remove these things now 9 minus 9 0 okay now 12 now here we have some database such as 21 minus 15 we have 6 13 minus 7 we have 6 8 minus 2 we have 6 okay 11 minus 9 we have 8 4 minus 8 we have 4 now understood okay now we have 0 over here 0 over here 0 over here and 0 over here okay so what does it means it means the critical path the critical path is b to g to h correct so this is a critical path so the b activity i am bringing all these things now okay so the B activity is having zero float, G activity is having a zero float and H activity is having a zero float. So these three activities are critical activities. Okay. And with the help of this, you are numerically solved. I hope you like this video guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.